Hello, this is Santa here, and welcome back to Model Kit Monday. This week, we'll be taking a look at the real grade Destiny Gundam from Gundam Build Fighters Try. What's that, you say? There's a uh, Gundam Seed Destiny show? I want to say it's an exaggerated rumor because that would imply that a Gundam series like that exists, and I really don't want to acknowledge that. Well, anyways, we have a Destiny Gundam here. Let's talk about the Model Kit, not about the series it comes from, because. Guess what? Sometimes it doesn't matter what series it comes from. You can't have a good kit from a bad show, or a bad kit from a good show. It is possible we saw the Lightning Gundam. Anyways, the Destiny Gundam is a real grade, which means it is excitement embodied. This is a 1 to 1 44th scale kit, but unlike high grades, it is much more complicated, having an inner wireframe. It looks like that, which will be all you see of it in this video, because I do not want to remove the armor parts uh, for this as it would take a lot of time, and I feel like it's unnecessary. But you can see the different grades of Gundam kits are displayed on the inside of the box. So you have Perfect Grade, which is uh, insane parts counts at a 1 60th scale. You got Real Grade, which is what we're going to talk about today. You got Made in Japan. You got SDs, which are non-scale. You got High Grade, which are 144 simpler kits. And you have Master Grade, which are 1 to 100. Uh, larger, more compl complex kits with an inner frame. So basically what a real grade does is it takes the size of the high grade, the parts count of the perfect grade, with the inner wire frame of the master grade. Which I think is a neat mixture. As it's kind of like a tiny perfect grade, almost. Um, and it's, it's really neat in that regard. So let's take a look at the Destiny Gundam. So here's the real grade Destiny Gundam without any weapons, armor or anything else really. Uh, I just kinda broke him down to his most base form. And I gotta say that the kit is quite impressive looking, especially with how much of him is actual plastic color. The only stickers I ended up using were the foil stickers for his eyes, the uh, little green section in his front of his helmet, and the, the green section in the back. Um, so it does give a nice look to it, but everything else was plastic color. But if you'd like a military-styled, realistic uh, sticker sheet with these decals here, you can put these on. Uh, they do give you a ton to work with, but I ended up only using the two crystal-like ones, the eyes, and the shield pieces. So let's take a look at his articulation. Starting with the head, it is on a ball joint. It is have the forward neck joint here. And overall, it works really well. It doesn't have too much range compared to a high grade, so there's that. It has swivel shoulders, it got out upward movement, outward movement. You have a shoulder pad that moves for arm, unrestricted arm movement, a uh, double jointed elbow as per usual. And you have a ball joint wrist, which is really cool. Plus, you have articulated fingers on this set of hands. You get a ball joint thumb here, ball joint finger that has a trigger finger that does move. And you have the same thing here where it does have a bend in the other three fingers. Which is really neat to see on this scale of Gunpla. Uh, it is nice to see that can be pulled off in this, this small size. So take a look at the torso here. It does have quite a bit of range. Uh, you can get it forward pretty much a, a lot. Pretty much a lot. That's exactly what I meant to say. It also has some side to side movement which is pretty neat. Uh, you get the hip panels all individually move, which is much appreciated, considering most high grades will do a standard default. Oh, these two pieces are in one uh, single movement, and then these two pieces don't move at all. But you do get a thigh swivel, a double joint knee with this cool uh, mechanism to it where it ends up sliding panels, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, reminds me of the MG figurized line. But you can have nice deep ankle uh, tilt along with everything of here up to a toe joint so you get quite a bit of movement out of this guy he can get all of his signature poses accomplished which of course most famously is his boxing poses um, or you, you can pose the super robot wars poses because you know pretty pretty cool in that too uh, this rumored seed destiny show I, I don't think put him to his full boxing potential, but it is possible, which is great, because I have had enough restricted articulation on Gunplot lately. 
What's pretty neat is you can open up the cockpit. It does have a nice tiny 1 to 1 44th scale cockpit in there. Now there is no figure that is designed to sit inside, but you do get a figure of his supposed pilot, which looks nothing like Shimon, so I am disappointed. But it is small enough, it could fit in there if it actually moved, but it is kind of a neat inclusion to include a miniaturized figure of the pilot. But other than that, the cockpit opening is kind of a useless feature almost. It's just kind of a, oh look, cockpit opens. Not going to display it open, that's for sure. Now in addition to the posable hands, you do get the five hands here, which are pre-posed. Now you get two really splayed open hands for some finishing moves or dynamic attacks. You also get two fists that are closed uh, more naturally than the posable hands can do. And you have a gun hand with a nice trigger finger. This works really well for holding his beam rifle, as the, the articulated hands can get a little loose sometimes. Now you do get two beam saber parts, uh, as the handles, which are in his shoulders, which I always thought was kind of neat, a uh, little hidden beam saber thing. You do get a shorter beam for more of a throwing kind of pose. You do get a longer beam for more of a beam saber-like pose, which is really neat. Uh, it works well. I, I think the beams look really good overall. Now, while beam sabers may be cool, it's always good to have other weapons, like a beam rifle and a shield. Now, these are really cool. I always liked that the Destiny Gundam's beam rifle is not gigantic. It's kind of small and compact. Works really well. Plus, the shield is really great looking. It extends out like this. It looks really nice. I do like the look of these weapons. I also like being able to store the beam rifle on his back here. It looks good. I like the ability to store weapons. I think that's a good function, especially since he has bigger weapons in his backpack. But also the shield does fold up, uh, so you can have storage there. And this handle can move, so if you do want dual wielding beam rifle action, it is possible, which is really nice. But yeah, you can see that there. He gets, you know, the beam rifle. Not much else to say. The final non-backpack accessory is the shield, the energy shield he has. It is really cool. It's molded in a transparent white plastic, but then it does have these purple stickers to give it that energy look. It looks really sharp. I do like the energy shield idea. So here is the Destiny Gundam's backpack unit, which you can see adds some red wings plus a cool rifle and a sword. It's just one reason why I haven't shown the backpack until now. The backpack does add a lot of weight to the Destiny Gundam, and it is a little easier to pose him without the backpack on there. But unlike the Lightning Gundam, he doesn't fall over when you slam a table, which is great. Except when you start posing him and want to slam a table, that's when things get a little unstable. But standing there straight like that, it works. So here is this high-energy, long-range beam cannon, which is quite cool. It is a little tricky to pose, but it is possible to have it flip out from the connector within the backpack. Uh, even though this whole weapon is on a sliding mechanism, it is possible to swing that far enough around to have him have that cannon going, which is great! But that is not the only weapon in his backpack, and I find the other one to be much cooler. Say hello to the Arondite Beam Sword, which you can see is quite impressive. It's a broad sword in with a beam on it which is pretty sweet. Uh, plus, the wings do expand out like this, which looks really, really cool. And you can see he just started leaning back a bit and didn't fall over. Congratulations, Destiny Gundam. You have good balance. Anyways, this is my preferred way of posing the Destiny Gundam as I find his beam sword to be the best weapon on him. And overall, I am really happy with this real grade kit. He is really cool. Uh... Despite only appearing in one episode of Gundam Build Fighters Try, and maybe some Super Robot Wars, uh, if you're so keen, or if you, you know, saw a thing called Gundam Seed Destiny, <sighs> then he's great. Uh, I honestly think that it's a great kit, it's a good design, it just, it's source material is a little sketchy, just saying. Now, I would recommend it for sure, I picked mine up actually at Barnes & Noble of places, uh, for $35, which is, you know, more than a high grade because of all the extra parts count and such. But, overall, I definitely recommend it. I think it's a great kit, and it's good for a Gunpla fan. It's definitely a challenging build, though, so if you're not got some experience under your belt, 
you might want to wait a little bit before trying to tackle a real grade because they are super impressive when they get done but it does take a while to get there before we go I do want to mention a couple things first of all it does come with a stand clip for a Bandai action base for Gunpla and there are effect pieces for his wings to have the energy effect but that is a separate premium Bandai release and I may or may not get that more likely may not based on its price but they are out there if you do wish to get that I believe they are coming out soon actually but other than that I must say that this is May the 4th but instead of talking about Star Wars I decided you know what, I'm going to talk about the real war in the stars because honestly Star Wars is more like star battles you know wars are actually really waged as much as just small battles but in Gundam there are wars all over the place including one in the pocket that was an awful pun I apologize be sure to check out HeroTaka.com for all your Gundam news and more but also check out next week's Model Kit Monday where we'll be taking a look at a non-Gundam model kit it will be an MG figurize. I said I was going to tackle non-Gundam kits at some point, and we're finally doing that. Also, until then, be sure to check out Sandat's Toy Chest on Thursday, where I'll be reviewing a random item from my collection. And Sandat Review on Saturday, where I'll be taking a look at a common Rider item. Until then, though, subscribe for more reviews. Check out my other Gunpla reviews here on Sandat 12. And... Stay tuned for more in the future, as I have a lot of Gunpla still left to review, and a bunch still left to buy. Anyways, Tungsus sound saying, goodbye.